This is the latest offering from Decathlon, the Inesis Tour 900 golf ball. And today we're gonna to find out if it beats the Pro V1. Before we take a look at this golf ball, guys, do make sure you are a free subscriber to the channel so you're not missing out on any videos that we have coming out. Tips, coaching, course vlogs, it's totally free to do. Hit the subscribe button down below. Now let's take a look at this golf ball. So for those of you that don't know, the Inesis Tour 900 is actually the second version of this golf ball. They had their first version that we reviewed last year and it did pretty well. It just fell short in a few categories, but Inesis have worked on the golf ball now and said that it's going to be up there and potentially rivaling the biggest name in the premium golf ball market we see, Titleist, the Pro V1. Now, a little bit about the golf ball. It is a three-piece golf ball. It's got the urethane cover and it's $29.99. And what that means is that a lot of people straight away when they read up about this golf ball, they actually compare it to another golf ball. This one, the Kirkland Signature Golf Ball. Now this is version three of that golf ball. This one comes in at $34.99 for 24 golf balls. So that's actually quite a significant difference in price. You're only having to pay five more pounds and you get an extra dozen. But in a few reports from other channels and other outlets, and even when we've tested it, it did okay, but it lacked a little bit. But the Inesis Tour 900 is saying, it's gonna rival this one, the Pro V1. We know this as the gold standard of premium golf balls. This is averaging around about 50 pounds a dozen, so maybe $70 for my American followers. So 50 pounds, 29.99, 34.99 for double the amount. Is it actually that price trumps everything and you pay for what you get? Or will actually this be a good alternative? They're saying that the distance is up there, which is the category that it fell down the most on last time. But today we're gonna to find out, I wanna hit some seven irons and I wanna hit some drivers to find out how this golf ball stacks up against three, three models. So let's get hitting some balls and find out, is it gonna be killing this one? So what we're gonna do now is hit some balls on the GC3, on the Foresight software and just see how this Inesis Tour 900 compares to the other ones. Like I say, Kirkland being the one it's most referenced to because it's in the similar-ish price category for performance, but the Pro V1 is where it's aspiring to be. So I'm gonna hit some seven irons, I'm gonna hit some drivers, we're gonna dive into the numbers and see, is it worth it? Should you be spending your hard-earned on this Inesis golf ball? Let's find out. Gauge it off ball speed and we're somewhere about right. They feel very nice. That one was flushed. There's been some lovely feels off that. So we've had seven there with the Inesis. First impressions, feels really good. I've only seen ball speed numbers and spin rates and it looks like it's somewhere where I would want it to be. Obviously on the table, we've got nothing up there, so I don't know. We're gonna jump into the title list, see if that's matching what I'm just getting a little bit of feedback, but feeling really good to start off with. Felt good. Okay, final title list. I've not actually used a title list in quite a while in play and tell you what, they still feel as good as they ever did. And the numbers were very consistent, but let's hit the Kirkland. We'll have a quick look at the seven iron numbers before we get into the important driver numbers, which is where generally these lower price tour level balls fall down. Bunnelon. 
So before we dive into the drivers, let's take a look at how these three are stacking up from the seven iron data. Now, summarizing just before we look at numbers, I would say in terms of feel, tall 900 felt the best to me, then it would be Titleist, and then it would be Kirkland. Just felt really sweet off the club face, the uh, the Inesis. And I would say I probably actually struck the Titleist a little bit better, only marginally. Um, the Kirkland just felt a little heavy and dull this time around for me. Didn't feel as as sweet as the other two compared um, in terms of the feel there. But looking at the numbers, how did it compare? And realistically, I'm looking at the carry number, I'm looking at the ball speed number, and I'm looking at the spin number. And if we were to rank them in terms of the distance, the carry distance, I would say that's probably the factor we most want to look at when we're looking at maybe mid irons. That and the sort of workability and the spin rate as well, because if it's spinning too much or too little, when we're coming into the greens, we're not going to be able to hold it or we're not gonna have any control over the flight if that's something that, if you're in that tour market, if in that tour category of a golf ball, that's probably an aspect you would be looking for as well. So in third place, in terms of the distance, we see that actually, Kirkland is coming in third and that was carrying 164 yards. I'd be looking for 180 yards carry um, in my seven iron. I'm a little bit down today feeling sluggish but I'm seeing that it's 164. In second place it was Tor 900. 168 yards of carry for the Tor 900 and Titleist came out on top at 170 yards. So only two yards in it between the Tour 900 and the Titleist, which I think is very good. Now, when we look at the spin, it's a slightly different look actually, because the Kirkland, that actually spanned the most 6,840 RPMs. The second highest spinner was actually the Titleist at 6,107. And then there was, I mean, there was, nearly nothing between them. The Inesis 5,979, so very, very little between those two there. It was actually the launch angle that was slightly uh, lower on the Inesis. It's why we're probably seeing that yard, yard off, I mean, point, point 0.1 of a degree, which is pretty much nothing, but not far away, just two yards separating them there with the seven iron. For me, like I say, the feel was decent, but how will it stack up when we get into the driver? Are we going to see that the Inesis drops off dramatically and the Titleist comes out on top? And where will that Kirkland stack up as well? Because even though it is cheaper at the minute, it's fallen four yards behind already. Are we going to see more when we actually get to the driver? So we're going to start with the Inesis like we did with the seven irons, hit some of these. I'm hoping it can climb up there to that Titleist level of performance because if it's saving you 20 pounds a dozen and you know two yards for 20 pounds if we see very similar results in the tight list i'd be definitely buying a lot more of these if i was in this bracket here also if there are any other balls that you want us to review drop a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any updates to help you spend your money a bit wiser or get better at the game let's fire this in assist off and see what we've got. I'm looking for around about 285 average carry and around about 2000 spin would be where I would want to be. What I'm happy to see here about five or six into the Inesis driver is that the feel from what I've got with the iron has carried on through into the, um, the driver feel. Sometimes they feel a little bit too soft with these budget range of tour golf balls, but it's really feeling quick off the face and it's feeling sweet like it did with the seven iron. I'm sneaky confident of that one. I think, looking at my ball speed numbers, they were, they were pretty decent there. Let's try the tight list, see how we go. Yep, 
you can tell why the Titleist is still the premium one. It just, it just delivers. He's never really made a bad version. I'm eager to see what they're gonna be like because I think they are literally neck and neck. But let's hit the Kirklands, see if I can keep up. I'd like this Kirkland to get up there, but I'm not holding much hope. I think this is gonna be about 10 to maybe 15 yards shorter. Oh, that was a good one. That felt nice. Ooh, Toey, but it's good. Helps the spin. Feels better than it did with the seven iron. I think the big difference with this one, the others feel like the Titleist and the Inesis feeling like they were just fast off the face. This just feels like it sticks a little bit longer. Let's keep going though. Can't hit it better than that. So it is judgment time. We know that Titleist came out on top in the seven iron, but will the Inesis have enough bang for its buck? As I expected, Kirkland came in last. That had a spin rate of 2,462, a ball speed of 162.9, and a carry average of 284.9. So about where I would want to be with my carry distance, a little bit too much spin and quite a low ball speed there. Like I said earlier, sometimes you just feel a little bit dead off the face, doesn't feel like the, the zipping and pinging. Interestingly enough, clubhead speed was pretty much similar. The Kirkland was the slowest, but only by 0.4 compared to um, Titleist and 0.8 of a mile per hour compared to the Inesis, which were 113 and 113.4 respectively. Now, which one comes out on top? Sadly, Titleist came in second place. This one had 292.4 carry with 2410 spin and 166 ball speed as where, 166.3, as where the Inesis, 293.3 with a 2407 spin and a 166.5. So only 0.2 difference in the ball speed and three RPM difference, but that resulted in a yard, well, 0.9 of a yard more with the Inesis. So for me, well done. Two yards shy with that seven iron, but actually creeps a yard in front with the uh, with the driver. Pretty much, in some places, it is half price, but it's it's three fifths the price of what a uh, a full range Pro V, twenty nine ninety nine and fifty pounds for the Pro V. Well done in assist. I think from last year's model, you've improved a lot, and it's one that if you are interested in trying it, I definitely recommend it. It seems to have been a lot better than the old Kirkland counterpart and one that I think it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on that golf ball if you are going to go and try some. So guys, thank you for watching that review. Remember to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done already and we'll see you in another review very soon.